Hello guys and welcome to your 40th Java tutorial and we are going to be covering the abstract keyword in Java. So as you can see here I have a Java is epic package. Uh, in it I have three classes. The as you can see here the empty main class, an animal class, and a cow class. So let's take a look at those uh, two other classes. The animal class all that has in it. Um, this might be uh, a bit of a new detail for you but since we are in a, an actual package now. We are in this Java is epic package. Uh, the fact that we have package Java is epic at the very top here means that the animal class belongs to that package. And as we can see by this hierarchy, it clearly does. Uh, in that animal class, all we have is a name method that prints out I am anonymous. The cow class extends from the animal class uh, and overrides that method. Uh, and uh, has a, prints out a message that is, I am a cow lol. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So without further ado, let's go right into this tutorial. So what is the abstract uh, keyword? Well, the abstract keyword is actually a Java modifier, much like the public, private, and protected modifiers. And uh, we can use it to modify a class. Here we have a public abstract class animal. So what does that abstract keyword entail? Well, what this now, uh, what this statement means, the fact that we made this class abstract, means that we can no longer create uh, instances uh, of the animal class directly. So we can't just do something like animal a is equal to new animal, and I'm screwing up a lot here, but uh, we can't just do something like this because this animal class is now abstract so we cannot reference it directly. All we can really do with it is we can simply extend from that class or implement from that class. We cannot use it directly. Um, but here if we say if we wa did want to create an animal uh, we could just put we could just say animal A is equal to a new cow uh, which we also saw in one of our previous tutorials on polymorphism. Right. And uh, I just wanted to mention the kind of the opposite of an abstract class. What we've been using essentially this entire time uh, concrete classes, classes that we can create direct instances of, and uh, we can essentially do everything else with them as well. So, concrete classes are classes like this cow class right here. Okay, so let's move on. What else can we do with abstract uh, as a modifier? We, we can also create abstract methods like so and these abstract methods do not actually need bodies so we can create uh, this eat method with absolutely no body just ending that line of code with a semicolon as we have done here and because this is an abstract method what exactly uh, does that mean for all the classes that inherit from the animal class well because this method is abstract it's it lacks a body so all the methods, all the classes that extend from or implement the animal class, like the cow class, they have to implement all of these uh, abstract methods. So what we would do here, we would just copy this part here and paste it over here, remove the abstract keyword, and then implement the eat method, meaning that we would, uh, I don't know, make the eat method do something and as you can see all our errors go away as quickly as one two three right and um, nom nom there we go beautiful I've never seen a finer piece of code in my life alright so <laughs> we just we um, we implemented the abstract method and all our errors went away so where exactly is this useful you may be asking yourself well let's imagine that we actually wanted to create a realistic animal class we would have tons and tons of methods we would have eat sleep a walk I don't know move or just a, a lot of these methods and um, we wouldn't really want to be too specific when creating that animal class with all of these different methods because we know all animals should be able to you know eat or sleep or do all these different things but we don't necessarily want to want to define a specific way that all animals should eat they animals are very different they eat uh, in different ways so all we would really want to do is just create a ton of these abstract methods that uh, all animals that uh, extend from the cow class they would have to inherit those methods 
and they would have to implement them as well. So we would have to have uh, the cow with this sleep method. So we would have to have uh, a defined way of sleeping for the cow. And I don't know, here we could put another system that I to print ln sleep, or I don't know, Z's. Just a ton of Z's, let's do that. That seems fun. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah, six Z's. Maybe, I don't know, the monkey sleeps with five Z's, you know? <laughs> they sleep differently. That's the kind of the, the general idea here. But either way, this is where it comes in very useful, where abstract classes come in very useful, because they give you a very good way of generalizing functions that you know have to be present. So, uh, yeah, right. So I think I've more or less covered everything I wanted to cover um, in this tutorial. And I should probably point out as a, just a point of warning that if you have abstract methods uh, in a class, that class must be abstract. If we remove this uh, modifier, you'll start getting some serious uh, errors. So um, that's just um, a pointer there. And uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did. And uh, have a good day. Peace.